Hey, what's going on, beautiful people? I got a quick question for you. Uh, just a just a matter of understanding and trying to get my head around everything. Um, and I don't want to downplay anything, but I, I want to ask a serious question. Um, the coronavirus pandemic's been going on for quite some time, or it feels like forever, but it's you know been a good portion of this year. And you know we've learned a lot about the virus in the past several months. Um, we know a lot more now than we did then. Uh, but I guess my question is, is for this particular virus, well, we understand that, that most people will get it um, over the course of a period of time. Some people won't get it, but, but most people will get it over time. Um, I'm just not understanding uh, the, the hardcore push for a vaccine um, in this scenario. Um, it sounds like the majority of people, and when I say majority, I don't mean like 51%, you know, I mean like 99.9, 99.8, you know, the far, far, far vast majority of people that come in contact with this uh, virus, which again, it's just one of many, 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 many viruses we come in contact um, every single day. But um, why this vaccine in particular I'm sorry, why this um, virus in particular needs a vaccine um, if the survival rate is so high? Um, you know, and I feel the same way really about the flu. So um, I guess I, I'm not clear on those numbers and the understanding, uh, time, effort, energy, research and development, um, trials, testing uh, for so little benefit, for so little benefit. And, and when I say little benefit, I don't mean Oh, you know, if you can save one life, then it was all worth it. Well, we all know that's just a talking point. That's not real, you know, because if that were the case, you know, um, you know, 3,000 people a year in Texas die in car accidents. So, I mean, if it was about that, then we wouldn't be allowed to drive vehicles. You know, everything is a, a risk scenario, you know. So I'm just trying to understand why this particular virus needs a vaccine and why people are so afraid of it. Um, like I said, I know early on the very beginning, there was a lot of fear, a lot of unknowns. We have a lot of data now. We have, we've done a lot of research on this and uh, it doesn't seem to be as deadly or as dangerous or contagious as we once thought. So I'm, I'm not 100% certain what the push is for a vaccine when we know that this thing mutates and there's gonna be so many different variations of it that a vaccine is just simply gonna be behind, behind the virus, uh, much like the flu is most of the time. Uh, it's very common and normal for, um, despite receiving flu shots, people get the flu and people die from the flu, you know. Um, it's just a bizarre, it's a bizarre thing uh, to me. Um, and and I'm just curious about this particular virus, you know. If somebody says, hey, you have a, a really good chance of not getting this and then you have an even better, an even better chance of getting it and surviving, by doing nothing, I mean, by literally doing nothing. Um, you know, if I catch this virus, they want me to stay away from other people, wash my hands, you know, that, you know, just normal when you're sick stuff, stay home, don't avoid people, avoid crowds, don't don't go around breathing on people, you know? So um, what's, what's different about this particular one? It's unusual uh, to have something so survivable require medical care. Um, so I'm just curious about that. What are people's thoughts on that? Um, what makes this virus uh, vaccine worthy? That seems unusual to me. So um, yeah, hit me up, let me know. If, if you have a really good chance of never getting this and an even better chance of getting it and surviving uh, by doing literally nothing, uh, what's, the, what's the upside of the vaccine? What, what, what does that get you? What does that prove? What is that um, what's the goal? You know, are you going to increase the survival rate from 99.9 .9 or 99.8 to 99.99? Like I'm not understanding, you know, um, is the vaccine to prevent you from getting it at all? So again, you're likely not going to get it or maybe you're likely to get it, but your survival rate's good. So is it just going to prevent you from getting it? Is that how a vaccine works? So if you get the vaccine, you can be in a room full of people with COVID and it'll prevent, the vaccine will prevent you from getting it or you'll get it and your body will be able to fight it off. Is that, is that how it works? Um, 
Because again, if that's how it works, well, my body was already going to fight it off. Naturally, on its own, my body was already going to fight this thing off, you know, to the tune of 99.9999%. So I'm just, uh, I'm curious on the vaccine thing. Uh, if somebody can fill me in, uh, it just seems like an awful lot of time, energy, effort, uh, like I said, research and development, uh, testing, trials, people have already been hurt by this. Um, so yeah, it's just an unusual practice as, and I understand that, you know, medicine is medicine and uh, we want to try to help people and take care of people. But um, unfortunately, it feels like we're spending a lot of time and effort and energy and research and development um, for something that's not even, you know, a um, It feels like the most pressing issue facing our country because it's in the news, but ooh, common sense tells us all that there are far more significant numbers of people dying from other causes that are preventable, that we know are preventable. So not understanding why we're spending so much money and time and effort chasing something that we know is going to mutate um, daily, weekly, monthly, you know, um, where, like I said, where we have, we could focus those resources on actually saving lives that we can actually attribute to um, a solution, you know, an actual, <laughs> an actual solution. Let's let's focus that money there somewhere else. But anyway, if you got something on that, feel free to holler at me. All right, love y'all. Bye.